Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to talk about Sandro Botticelli. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii et Spiritui Sancto, Sucutera in Principio et Nuc et Semper et Seculi Seculorum. Amen. Botticelli, this might be a painter you know. I know that's one of the jokes in the comments is I pick obscure painters, but most of you guys know Botticelli. In fact, Botticelli is not his real name. His real name is, is something else, but Botticelli means little barrel, and so his brother gave him that name because uh, he kind of had a face that was like a, like a barrel. But he is peak Renaissance on every level. He was 1445 to 1510. And he is considered, I mean, he's synonymous with Florence. If you go to Florence, you'll see quite a lot of his paintings at the Uffizi. And he has some at the Louvre as well. But he is in that high period of everything that's great about Florence. He is contemporaneous with da Vinci. He and da Vinci actually didn't get along stylistically. Uh, you see da Vinci was kind of going toward what we would later call high renaissance with Michelangelo, whereas uh, the older that Botticelli got, he kind of stayed more back in the in the kind of uh, archaic early renaissance that's also exemplified by another guy that we've done, Fra Angelico. So Botticelli, he's most known for The Birth of Venus, which is, of course, just beautiful. I had a book of the Uffizi because I used to collect museum books and the one that I got, this must have been 2001 when I was there for my honeymoon, uh, had the birth of Venus on the cover. Because look, if you're the Uffizi, it makes sense you could have the birth of Venus. It's just gorgeous. That face is gorgeous. He's also known as Primavera, but we're going to focus more on his religious art, of course, because, uh, you know, this is a Catholic site. Now, in terms of how Catholic he was, uh, you know, there's some, there's some idea based on uh, some biographers of him that he might have been a homosexual uh, there's nothing that's really concrete so we'll just say that he never married and he didn't marry now he did have a muse Simonetta Vespucci now she is one of the inspirations if you know some of his self-portraits and even uh, the the birth of Venus kind of has the same look so she could have been like a platonic ideal version of a woman but it seems like he might have been a homosexual or at least uh, asexual. What else? Okay, well, he did some engraving for a couple of editions of Dante's Divine Comedy, uh, the, the, the great three-part series. I have read Purgatorio and Inferno. I've never read Paradiso. He did do that. And he has three of his works in the Sistine Chapel, Pope Sixtus Six Dis was the one who designed and built that chapel. It's very small if you've ever been there. I've been lucky to have been there twice, most recently in 2016. It's very small and it's mostly known for Michelangelo's work, but Botticelli has three works in there. I mean, they're not that super well known, but he's got The Temptation of Christ, which you can see here. The Youth of Moses. And The Punishment of the Sons of Kara and that goes to Moses so the Israelites rebelled against Moses and Aaron and, and that's a story from um, the, the Torah so what's he mostly famous for in terms of like religious art well he's got a bunch the adoration of magi is probably his first work when he was very young he was in his 20s when he did this then he did some really well-known altarpieces the Bardi altarpiece you can see here it's got uh, the two Johns, John the Baptist and John the Evangelist. Then you got the San Barnaba altarpiece. This is at the Uffizi. You got the Lamentation of Christ. There's a couple of these, but I like this one. I just like how horizontal Christ is in it. I think it's just very beautiful. The Pala delle Convertite, which is a crucifixion one. The Sistile Annunciation, which is beautiful. I kind of like how Mary's kind of ran, like talk to the hand kind of thing, but it's, it's very beautiful and uh, Gabriel looks gorgeous in it. The Magnificent Madonna. All generations will call me blessed, right? The Sacra Conversazione. This is Madonna with some saints. And this one's really beautiful, Madonna with Lilies and Angels. 
And again, these are just some of his paintings. He did do quite a lot of portraits and he has like Primavera and Birth of Venus, some mythological ones. But no doubt he is a titan. He kind of went into obscurity, at least his reputation did in the 18th century. And then the Pre-Raphaelites, which is my favorite art movement, uh, and I've talked about it before on the, on the treatment on Raphael, who is considered, Raphael is considered a high renaissance. Uh, they kind of resurrected uh, Botticelli's reputation and he is considered one of the greatest renaissance painters now of all time. So this is Botticelli, possible closet homosexual, but you know, we don't know what he, what he was going through with his soul and we can't judge him of course like that, but what did he do with his skill? It's like the parable of the talents. We have an episode here. What, what do you do with your skill? He offered it to the greater glory of God. So th that is something that needs to be said for his good work there. And as always, we pray for everybody who has passed away. But Botticelli, he is an icon. Guys, post in the comments. Let me know which of these is your favorite painting. Have you been to the Uffizi? Have you been to Florence? I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless.